Good morning. I think we've come to the end of our going to the extra mile, but that doesn't mean to say you've got to stop going the extra mile. I hope it has encouraged you, spurred you on to go that extra mile because you're changing lives. You're probably saving lives by being that witness, reaching out and crossing over. You know, the religious Pharisees in this story of the Good Samaritan, the experts in the law asked, who is my neighbour? And Jesus pointed out that the neighbour was the one who crossed over, who showed mercy, who showed kindness, who went the extra mile, who was prepared to be inconvenienced, who didn't become selective in who he would help and who he would support. But he just simply crossed over because there was a person in need. Now, I don't know about you, but I've noticed that even in church over the years, our focus tends to be on reaching out to friends and family you know, and trying to bring them into the church. And we sometimes have forgotten the stranger. We sometimes have limited our efforts to reach the stranger to a leaflet in their hand or through their letterbox about the gospel. But Jesus is suggesting here that we reach out to the stranger, not by simply passing a leaflet to them, but by the example of the good Samaritan, the good neighbour, who reached out by crossing over and helping him in this time of need and being a support to him in this time of need. And what he was doing was expressing the love of God through practical ministry. Very often the church's effort to reach the stranger has been hit and miss, more often miss, because it's limited to that leaflet or that quick passing word that, that we dish out to someone um, about the gospel. But, you know, the good neighbour, it involves more than just simply a quick message, gospel message in their ear as they're passing. It, com it involves coming alongside and showing the practical love, that continued commitment that the Good Samaritan showed to come back and, and check that the person was OK. You see, I think the church for years has been obsessed with getting decisions and getting a decision count. You know, Jesus never pushed for decisions. He never pushed for people to say the sinner's prayer. You know, in fact, that there is there is no sinner's prayer in the Bible. And I can't see anybody praying the sinner's prayer with someone. I know it's a good starting point and it does help for us to identify crossing over from darkness into light. But, you know, Jesus was commissioned was make disciples not have a decision count. Make disciples. And I think the process of making disciples begins when the church begin to reach out, when Christians begin to reach out, and Christians go the extra mile, and they come alongside the stranger, even though they have not made a decision to follow Jesus, or they come to church. But disciple making can begin with that developing the friendship and discerning the moment to bring that person into the house of God. Discipleship begins perhaps even before a person becomes a Christian. You know, Jesus finished by saying to the expert, who could dispute with him um, that, that he should go and do likewise? But, you know, can I ask you to do the same? Go and do likewise. The expert in the law, he found reasons to say, well, the word doesn't mean what the word means, and, and I'll be selective about my... Listen, just go and do likewise. Just go and reach out. Go the extra mile. Keep your eyes and your whole heart open for the stranger in distress who's been beaten and battered and bruised by the enemy in the world today. He's been spiritually mugged. Don't be too fearful or too busy or certainly don't be too holy. Can I finish by saying not to devalue the impact of your mercy and kindness towards the stranger in distress. It can have a massive impact upon their souls. It will break through all the perceptions, arguments, doubts about the church and about Christians. When you reach out, you go the extra mile to show the love of God. God bless you. Let's keep going the extra mile. Amen.